e te maunga nei, nei, ko te, ko te matairangi, he mihi atu, um, e te awa ki raro, ko te waimapi, he mihi atu, e uh, te papakainga, ko te aro, he mihi atu, um, e ngā iwi mana whenua o tēne rohi, ko te ati awa, taranaki whanui, ko Ngāti Tō Rangatira, um, ko Ngāti Raukawa, um, tēnā, tēnā koutou, he mihi mahana ki a, ki a koutou. Ka mihi aho ki te maunga Taranaki, um, e hara tōku maunga, e ngāri te, te ko te maunga o ngā iwi o Taranaki. Uh, ka mihi aho ki te awa Waitara, ka mihi aho ki ngā iwi e waru o Taranaki katoa. Ko te Prince Rupert Taku Waka, ko uh, i te tau 1841, ko a tai mai. Uh, he uri nā ingarani a hau, ko Lash te whānau, uh, ko Stephanie Lash Taku Ingoa. He kai mahi a te roa mahara o te kāwana tanga a hau. Um, I hara ahau te tangata mohi o ki te kōrero o tira he teka um, ana kia, kia mehi atu kia koutou. Uh, nō reira ngā mehi kia koutou, te honga o te kaupapa te wā, te honga o te NDF, um, tina koutou katoa. Ka huri au i te reo Pākehā, uh, te mea ai kaore au i te pai ki te kōrero o te reo Māori uh, tonu. So, um, I'm Stephanie Lash. Uh, thank you very much for coming and thank you to NDF and to Papa for having me to represent Te Roa Maharo Te Kāwanatanga. Um, as Matariki said, thanks Matariki for that um, introduction. I'm a Principal Advisor at the National Archives um, and I'm going to give a presentation on what we are doing to try and put ourselves in a good place to respond to um, Iwi Māori and our uh, treaty partner users. And I'd like to acknowledge Tale Masters who wrote this presentation and gave it originally at the ICA conference a few weeks ago. So if you saw that, um, please don't uh, come up afterwards and tell me how great that was. <laughs> I just started off by saying where I, where I came from, um, and here's a picture of um, Taranaki Maunga from Whanganui taken by Lawrence Eberhardt, which I like very much. If you are um, on a really clear day in Kapiti and Waikanae, you can see Taranaki Maunga over the horizon, and that's something I really enjoy doing to see my, home, my homeland there. So I guess I'd start by acknowledging that we have a really long way to go in terms of um, creating the right um, capability and good relationships with our Māori groups and experts because the more that we learn, you know, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing, the more we realise we have to learn and the further that we need, we realise we need to go. So I'm going to cover just a tiny bit of what we're doing today. I'm going to cover three approaches, which is our institutional context for those who, um, who aren't very familiar with the machinations of where our Kaiwaka New Zealand sits, and our current strategic approach and some of the activities that we've been doing. This is our current um, slogan. Someone said on Twitter the other day, it makes no sense. Uh, enabling trusted government information. I was like, it doesn't make sense. Oh, oh we spent ages on it. Kia pono ai te rua maharo te kawanatanga. Enabling trusted government information, it's what we're all about. So that reflects our aim not only to care for public archives and the treasures that we look after, but making sure that the public sector information, which we're the regulator of, is managed appropriately throughout its entire lifespan so that it can be used and understood at every point of its life and so that by the time it gets to the National Archive, if that's where it's headed, that we can understand its context and how it was used. Um, that's a foundation of a... Um, of a of a democracy, of a democratic society, um, giving uh, the citizen the opportunity to examine the record of government. That's what we're all about. That's us there. Uh, archives is part of the Department of Internal Affairs. Te Tari Tai Whenua, we're a core public service agency and we're part of a branch called Information and Knowledge Services, Te Tahuhu Eating a Kōrero. Um, there's Te Puna Matauranga and Te Roa Mahara. We are um, cousins, sisters, friends, collaborators. Um, we administer the Public Records Act 2005, which is a very great piece of legislation that we love, and it establishes that regulatory framework for government information management. And um, we also manage four repositories of archives nationwide. So the records that are transferred to archives by government information for Māori are very important. They contain a range of information relating to iwi and hapu, to whenua, um, atua, and this can be um, transactional, recording the interactions of the Crown with, um, with iwi Māori. Um, there's also archives that could be regarded as taonga tuku iho, which are um, passed down through time that we have the privilege of caring for. A lot of matauranga Māori contained in our holdings that's been collected by the Crown throughout the last 179 years. And they require management considerations from a te ao Māori perspective. We are fundamentally 
uh, we're a government archive, which is a colonial institution by construct, and so we find ourselves in a tricky place. Um, I don't think it's uh, just Māori archivists and, um, and kaitiaki who understand that archives, archives in particular, have a life force, they have a Māori. All of us who work with them understand that. We know when they're... Um, feeling comfortable and safe and we know when they are when we're not going about things the right way we just get to know archives in that way and so when you have that feeling in your heart that sets you up well for starting this journey at least which is where we are and we also work in a standard government context with policies and practices which is a bit strange and so we've come to having things like a human remains policy and a, a paranormal activity uh, policy and um, and all kinds of other bits of, you know, like bits and pieces of policy and practice that we're putting into the standard government context of um, all about addressing how the things that we look after are alive and they have their own lives and thoughts and, um, and powers. And we also understand that, um, that uh, Māori is still connected to all of the taonga that we hold, dis, dis, instead, despite what form it takes, whether that's the original or a digital surrogate. Just a little refresher here on Te Tira Te O Waitangi for those of us who need a, a slight, um, you know, the 10 second... Uh, refresh. So in its three articles, this is a back translation of the Māori articles of Te Tira Te O Waitangi from Sir Hugh Kafaru, which he did in um, 1988. So that's not what the English text of the treaty says, but what um, an English approximation of what the Māori text of Te Tira Te O Waitangi says. See me later if you'd like any more resources about that. Um, we've based our, the way we want to proceed on Te Tira Te. And so because we are part, we are an agent of the Crown as a colonial institution and a government archive, it's tutority is important because everything that we say or do has to take into consideration that partnership um, and that responsibility we have to Māori as our treaty partners. And what we're on the journey of working out um, how what we're going to do is how we can best serve our treaty partners and collaborate and work with them without putting the onus on Māori to do everything for us or come and fix it when we hoon ahead and then get it wrong. Uh, that's an easy trap to fall into, that we've probably fallen into in the past, we don't want to do that, and so that balancing act is constant. Our obligations to Tangata Māori are very helpfully enshrined in the Public Records Act. Back in 2005, this was still a little bit unusual for um, the legislation to go into such detail. This we consider as the starting point. This is where we want to start. So we have an Archives Council. The Archives Council is independent from us and it advises the Minister on whether things are going well in Archives. And we require that at least two members have knowledge of Te Kanga Māori. And the, the crucial... The crucial part of the Public Records Act, which is exciting, which is yet to come to pass, um, that we're excited about, is the recognition that an iwi-based or a hapu-based repository can be approved as a repository where public archives can be stored. That has cool, that has interesting implications. So we want to expand how we do this, we want to go further. Here are the main ways that our work relates to the three articles of Te Tiriti. You can see we've organised our obligations according to those tenets of government or governments by the Crown, the rights of Māori to have undisturbed possession of their taonga, and we take a more, you know, like a metaphysical uh, view of taonga um, instead of the English translation of Te Tiriti, and full citizenship and human rights of Māori. This is the DIA framework which we work within, um, and these are all parts, these are all like work programs that DIA is involved in. And Archives New Zealand and the National Library, Te Puna Mātauranga, currently have got 25 post-settlement redress instruments, or whakaetanga, uh, te akitaonga, um, and that's uh, spread across 31 post-settlement claimant groups. And these include commitments for archives to address the issues that are of relevance to the relevant group, which is different for everyone. Um, so we don't prescribe that, we, um, our partners tell us what it is that they want to get from the archives. And these are the most common uh, issues that are raised in settlement instruments for what um, settlement, settled groups would like to get from archives. Uh, this can give us a focus for improving some of our services. So um, the ways that we're working with settled iwi and hapu groups um, Usually that takes about five to ten years after settlement for the group to get into a position where they want to start looking at archival um, or uh, heritage taonga after they've dealt with some of the more um, you know, higher up issues on their uh, aspirations. Five to ten years, um, 
some of the examples are, for instance, today we've advertised that there's, um, we're going to run some Ngati Puro internships that closes next week. Um, that's run in conjunction with Te Runanga or Ngati Puro. People who will come to archives will host them and they will um, work on their own Taonga Tukuiho. We'll facilitate that. Uh, we're already working in Christchurch with Ngai Tahu, who are um, in our new building down there, working on some of their taonga. And previously we've hosted staff and facilitated and sent some of our own staff to work on projects for uh, revitalising Taranaki Reo and um, identifying and describing and digitising taonga from um, Tainui and Tuhoi. This is a good way to build the relationship because then the people who are uh, working with us from the iwi and hapu get paid, crucially, and they can build some experience and information science if that's what they're interested in. They can work in the area of archives and library that they want to, and we can do things like provide inventories of what we've got, improve access to some of the many, many thousands of archives we've got that are still not described in a, a full way, give them high-res digital copies, preservation advice, stuff like that, whatever's helpful. In our strategic context, all the work that we're doing is underpinned by this um, cool document here, which is Archives 2057, Te Rautaki 2057. It's our long-term strategy. Everything we're doing at the moment is moving towards the aims in this, and one of the key uh, principles of it is that we will design to enhance our special relationship with Māori as treaty partners. So at the strategic level, that means that we, um, you know, we're changing all of our business processes and models to make sure they're informed by tikanga. Um, led by our very able uh, Ratonga Māori uh, advisors, and the processes that we need to ensure that Mātauranga Māori is, um, gives better outcomes for Māori what they're looking for, rather than what we think people need. So part of that is working on our capability development, so getting our own skills in house in order. If we have stronger te reo Māori and tikanga skills, then we can be in a better place to um, understand our Māori users and what it is that they want and need from us. And we can be better relationship partners and, and do better collaboration. That's a bit small, the writing's a bit small, but you can see these are, these are the four uh, foundation concepts we use for our relationship building. Kaitiakitanga, whakapapa, whanaungatanga and taonga. And I should point out here that kaitiakitanga there, we're not saying that we are the kaitiaki, we used to say that and now we know that's wrong, we're not the kaitiaki of the um, taonga ma Māori that we hold, now we call ourselves kaipupuri or holders, we feel that's more appropriate. What we mean here is that we are... Um, Enabling Māori, supporting Māori and their kaitiakitanga of the tanga that we hold just because we hold them doesn't mean they don't own them. I put, I put this slide in here even though I can't say anything at the moment about what we've got cooking for Mahi Corona and for Te Pai Tawhiti because it's all subject to the internal um, machinations of planning. But the wider strategic aims, um, drivers that we're participating in are Te Ara Taonga, which is the collective approach through which the cultural sector contributes to making those whakayetanga, the letters of settlement. And Mahi Corona, the Crown's strategy for Māori language revitalisation. You can imagine that we have many, many, many thousands of items that record... Um, te reo Māori from the early mid 19th century through to very recently, and te pai tawhiti, the Crown's response to the Y262 report, which is really just done to kick off this year and it's really exciting. Hope that maybe next time, next year, we'll be able to come back and show you what we're working on. So now I'm getting to a couple of the things that we're doing to um, go beyond translation and try really hard to get in a good place. So just a couple of the things that we're doing. We're working on our culture, te reo and te kanga Māori capability and understanding the foundations of te ao Māori and we've got some cool system work going on and we've got some groups within our, our workplace that we're mobilising. So we've had staff just at Te Rua Mahara focused on um, Māori uh, responsiveness to Māori since the early 2000s but that went into abeyance for a few years um, in the mid 2000s and we're, but we're back with a vengeance so we've got a Māori strategic portfolio at our leadership level and the things you would expect uh, principal advisor advising for Māori at that um, highest level and an ohu Māori and an ohu Hapuri. I'll go into those in a sec and all of these things here are the expectations um, that we measure our progress against it's good to have those Pākehā feel safe when you have a, um, guidelines that you can measure yourself against and these are certainly very impressive ones. 
So DIA's got this, uh, this Teaka Potama example. So we are measuring ourselves against these steps here. Uh, Teaka Potama, you know, the, the um, improving, improving our knowledge and capability all the time. So we have, um, this is an example of the progression across the levels in one of the areas. It's a really, it's a really big document. But we've identified Whakapakuri, or this level two here, as a minimum level of capability for all staff by 2021, which is just around the corner. I don't know how many of us would get to uh, Māra Matanga. I don't know if we would want to be able to claim to be ex extensive and influential with Māori organisations. Really all like to be at Ahitipua though. Recognise as a team with mana and authority. We wouldn't, how do you recognise yourself as a team with mana and authority? You'd kick yourself right back down the level if you tried to claim that. So this look like, when we're building our te reo Māori and our tikanga Māori capability, we have a lot of support from um, the department to build our understanding and do some foundational knowledge. And um, this looks, um, looks quite basic. Waiata, karakia and te reo Māori renditions of job and unit names and ex supporting each other to use te reo Māori in correspondence. And it is, this is probably, you know, like the minimum you'd expect from a, a, a woke looking um, public sector organisation, but we are a, quite a multicultural um, team, we're quite a small team, there's about 80 staff around the country, lots of people too, especially some of our like older LIFO archivists in some instances, certainly not all, um, we're going on this journey for the first time, and so doing things like getting wire to mihi and karakia and understanding the whakatau and the pōwhiri and um, you know, working to understand the purpose of our teams and our units and translating those into te reo Māori, that's, that's new for some people. Making sure we get these right, well it looks basic, is fun and it brings us all together and it excites people and it, um, making sure we get it right. We especially love our two institutional waiata, which are he waiata mihi for formal occasions and te manaki taonga for jazzier times. Um, <laughs> Really like that one. Have you noticed too that Pakia quite often are really reluctant to sing songs and like so you can kind of, sometimes you can, uh, with an unnamed organisation the other day, I went there expecting that they would be just way, like way ahead of us in terms of their confidence and leading the, the porphyry and stuff and uh, you know they were um, like reading off their swipe cards and like they were clearly visibly nervous and I felt really recognised that when I was at that stage and when we were at that stage and I was like, I guess we're all on this journey. In terms of water, my, my personal philosophy is it's uh, more important to give it heaps than it is to get it 100% totally accurately correct, and I like to encourage my colleagues uh, for the same. <laughs> um, one of the really, really generous um, things, um, Te Wananga Orokawa has been supporting us to, um, in this aspiration. We've um, been spending the last five years building this relationship with Te Wananga Orokawa. They are the uh, Tikanga Māori tertiary provider who are based in Ōtaki at their beautiful campus and they describe themselves as distinctively Māori and they are turning out amazing graduates in, um, in all kinds of kaupapa Māori uh, qualifications, um, Māori law, um, the people that we are working with mostly are Hinunana Mangan, who runs the um, Diploma and Bachelor and Master's courses in Information Management from a Māori Worldview, and we've learned so much um, from Te Wānanga Orokawa, and we love working with them. So we've been on two Noho Marae recently um, with Te Wānanga Orokawa, wānanga quite extensively how our two worlds meet, and their 10 um, foundations um, for the information management um, have totally blown our minds and changed our worlds and we're just really hoping that we um, will be in a position next year to host their staff and their students to come to us and we can um, reciprocate some of that hospitality. That's what we did there, that's what I just said. Who's from archives here who's been on a noho? Have you, did you love it Nina? Was it really amazing? Like it was quite life transforming, eh? <laughs> yeah. So I've got a tiny case study here now that I didn't get um, any photographs for in time. But one of the things that we've done recently that we are quite uh, interested in uh, furthering and that we're a little bit proud of um, was 
broadening our tikanga Māori framework for digital storage. Um, so in terms of systems, our physical storage procedures, I alluded before to our, you know, our policies and practices, we've had health and safety and risk frameworks and, um, you know, for ages and we've long acknowledged th things like the, the balance of tapu and noa and important um, taonga Māori. Uh, but during a recent... That we're really comfortable with that in the physical, with the paper and the, the object, the physical object archival space. But recently we had a project to move some digital tanga permanently between servers and racks in a third party data centre where all of our data is stored. And so we had the opportunity to consider how this applied in a digital paradigm. Um, it was initially raised as a personal safety issue, a cultural issue, and so we sought advice on the appropriate tikanga from um, the rangatira whom we have the relationship with at Taranaki Whanui. And so the conclusion was that we ought to have a whakawātea at the data centre to clear the way between the old servers, the moving of the data, um, and the new ones, and a, and a way to return the old racks that were being used to store the data to a state of NOAA and mitigate those risks. And now we, um, it was quite amazing at the whakawātea ceremony to see the penny drop um, among some of our um, partners whom we work with in Taranaki Whanui to look at the server racks and realise that that's where the data is stored, that that's, they're all in there in the ones and zeros and to expand our, expand our own minds into that um, paradigm. It was, it was pretty cool. And we think that we can now align these processes across digital archives for transfers and for whenever else we do a sort of migration exercise. Um, we wouldn't have cottoned on to that issue if it hadn't been for those, these beginning steps of capability building we've been doing. But the feedback that we got from our, um, our visiting, our, you know, visiting our kaumatua and um, our Taranaki Whanui colleagues who came with us to run that ceremony was, um, it was very, yeah, as I said, the penny, the penny dropped for all of us about this, what, um, applying in a little bit of a sense creating te kanga means around digital storage and this digital paradigm. And the next thing we're doing is we, um, it's gonna be announced today, but, I am announcing it now. It's out? Okay, cool. Thanks, Joshua. So we're, <laughs> we're replacing our archives management system. So I know some people will be really pleased to hear that Archway is being retired and sent to the, the system rest home. Um, Archway is not only the front line, um, the front facing online finding aid, but it's how we manage the archives at the back end. And so we're replacing uh, all of the systems that we use to manage the archives. Uh, it's pretty exciting. But during procurement, we put in um, requirements for um, our vendors to consider New Zealand data sovereignty considerations and while that issue is still playing out with what we are um, the government and the sector as a whole is ultimately going to do to respond to Māori data sovereignty issues um, we at least are in a, a good place to be able to make sure that the data that um, that is migrated that is created that is um, yet to be created and yet to be stored is going to be um, appropriately handled as the issue with the, the Māori cloud kind of plays itself out and we get to a point where possibly we have the backing to store all of our data in New Zealand. All of our data is stored in New Zealand at the moment, that's feasible for now. So with an onshore data centre and a data plan, um, it means that we have got the time and we've got the space to explore this with Māori data sovereignty experts to make sure that the future systems and contract negotiations will be able to proceed without you know, having to undo heaps and heaps of procurement arrangements which if you're involved in anything to do with the P-word procurement, you would recognise as a massive pain. And the other really big thing, the really big project that we want to embark on is improving some of our descriptive challenges. So we've had constant feedback from Māori researchers and all other researchers, to be honest, that our current system is difficult to use and that's because it's a core archival, it's a, it's a system that was made for archivists, not for researchers. And it was, um, our, it's difficult to use and it's difficult to locate the archives that people want to find unless they're really well versed. And some people enjoy getting into the mind of the 19th century uh, correspondence clerk and some people don't have time for that and the parking's going to run out. So... Um, we are going to embark on a huge project to improve our metadata. It's going to take decades. We're really pumped about it. Uh, see us in 10 years and see how far we've come. And if we're still pumped about it, I think it's going to be great. So here's a little example. I don't know if you can see this here. This is a screenshot from Archway. Um, it shows some of the, just some of the issues that we've got with descriptive Māori metadata. Um, 
So archives are titled based on what they were originally called by the person who wrote down um, the title uh, when it was created. So this, this is a letter that came from the 13th of May 1887 and Ngangarangi and others have written the Memorandum of Transfer. Uh, it's a... Um, it's from the Māori Affairs um, Wanganui Court series of records, and it's, uh, it's got some other ones, uh, other pieces of correspondence attached to it. So this was the original title, uh, and whomever listed this originally uh, put in the square bracketed term that, um, that Okirai, if you were not familiar with that, um, is it Whangaihu, and that the, the bundle of correspondence contains te reo Māori and related documents. So we've got a crack team of archivists, um, Ohu Hapuri, who are going through all of the known te reo Māori content we've got now and expanding on the descriptive metadata. Archway, um, we're doing this in Archway right now, but our new system aims is going to have the capacity for user-contributed metadata, which which uh, we've got a range of ways that we think we're going to um, input some of that. Descriptive Māori metadata is only passed on to us quite rarely because with a very few exceptions, the role of Crown IM, um, IM in supporting Crown Māori relationships is not very well understood by public sector agencies. And so the metadata that we have is usually generated by researchers or people who are working with us on projects uh, or archivists are doing it themselves. It's a labour of love. And so this is an example of an item description that's been enhanced by one of our staff members. Um, our old system archway doesn't really allow things like alternate spellings or uh, spelling mistakes. Uh, if, you, if there was a spelling mistake, if there was a typo, come back. If there was a typo made in the original here, then that, that stays in there and it, it won't give you sort of a Google style result. You spelt it. Um, Whangahue, did you mean whangaihu? Um, we're hoping to be able to correct that. And so the additional archival description we've got here are um, uh, people who are mentioned in the correspondence, the place, the map, the river. Uh, <coughs> here are the terms that were put into that um, improvement. We are working on using the um, National Library's um, subject headings, um, ngā upoko tukutuku, up to the point where, um, where that's appropriate for library, kind of library and archival systems. Um, and that work that's been done is really amazing. And the fields that people will be able to contribute to will include things like um, the ingoa whānau, the awa, the whenua, the rohe and the reo, but um, we'll be able to configure the new system so that more metadata terms can be added as well. So that's gonna take a few decades. Um, there are plenty of Te Reo Māori holdings. Okay. So that'll be cool. Um, <laughs> and the last thing um, that we're doing in our work is um, creating our ohu. So earlier I mentioned that we've got ohu hapuri and ohu Māori. Ohu hapuri are the ones I'll focus on. That's a group, um, it's a cooperative working group within archives to make it easier to um, do little projects and little things to respond to what our Māori users are asking for, particularly those settled iwi and hapu groups. That's, um, here's some of the things that we've been working on in the last year, mainly improving metadata, um, creating registers and inventories of, um, of taonga Māori and all these things here. We're also trying to wrap our heads around the use and reuse of access um, and rights management and copyright and the ownership of mātou, ranga Māori and intellectual property and therefore what can be used and what should be made available online and what should be under Creative Commons and whether, when and when we ought not, for instance, upload images of tupuna. That's uh, constant, um, fascinating intellectual exercise. And so, I guess in some ways our, our progress has been really huge over the last few years um, and in some ways the expectation, in terms of the expectations possibly, we've still got a very long way to go. And so I've got a few questions that continually uh, come up for me as someone um, trying very hard to implement a cultural paradigm without being appropriative. And so the open-ended questions that I'll leave us with, I guess, are what, um, what's the role of the government archive in um, decolonising and re the public record? Um, in the public information, the public record was created by the government, by the state. It's a record of what the state saw and did as it was going about its business. And Māori will very often not agree with what the state interpreted of what it saw and did. So what's our role? Um, how do we stay true, I suppose, to our role as a... 
um, our duty to the Crown and our duty to Māori. How do we reconcile that? And in terms of not wanting to put the onus on Māori to tell us what to do and how to do it correctly and to make one group of Māori speak for the entire um, Māori population, how do, we, how do we get that right and how do we make sure we're not doing that? So should we go away and bring ourselves up to a minimum agreed level of capability before trying to engage or is it okay for us to give it a go with um, good intentions and humility and get it wrong? And um, are we willing to publicly own it when we get it wrong? And is it okay to try things and what we are learning in a tikanga Māori way and get it wrong? I don't know. Um, yeah, so none of those questions, I think, have a, a straightforward answer, but there's many hundreds of small answers in all the choices we make day to day. And so I guess the important thing for me, for us, is that we keep trying and ask for your patience while we try and get there. So I'll wrap up there. Uh, he mihi mahana kia koutou. Tēnā koutou katoa. Happy to like hang around. Sure. Um, we're a little bit over time, but if people wanted questions, we can either continue to take them, or Stephanie has said she's happy to talk to you face to face. Yeah, oh, it's lunch there's time, one. So I don't want to like impinge on anyone's lunch. A hand shot up. So I think I think we'll take it. Tenākoe, Stephanie. I te tūtahi katikara me tukumi ki kā koe mō tō kōrero kua kōrero tia. Pa i te rongo i te kōrero Māori i te tahi wāhi pākia. My question is, I guess, in regards to the metadata, do you guys have much to do with the ngau poko tuku tuku? Uh, we don't have anyone on the uh, Upoko Tukutuku board, eh, Nakala? Kali? No. Oh, Kauri, yep. I thought you like Kali. Yep. Yeah, come up here and speak into them. We, lo we love Nga Upoko Tukutuku and we love the work that has been done and we want to um, use that as appropriate. And here's Nakala to say something. Oh, the buck has been passed. Oh, no, Kia ora. No, um, thank you first of all for your corridor. It was amazing. And, uh, and Tale as well. <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to um, uh, reflect on the Ngao Pukutukutuku, which is, um, a, it's got three supporters. Um, Te Raupu Whakahau, which is the group of Māori librarians, Lianza and National Library. So it's, it's not just National Library. Um, we have important partners. Um, there is... Uh, uh, to, to talk about it as Māori subject headings is a little bit misleading because um, it's, it's, it's an ontology in a way. It's, um, it was designed to be extensible, uh, and I think that's still the case. Um, and uh, we're we're hoping that it will be uh, useful to to many other many others in the sector um, because it is the I believe the only indigenous thesaurus of such terms in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a bit of a tongue in its own right uh, and quite a lively one. Kia ora. Ontology is the way of the world. It's where we're all going. Love ngau poko toko toko. Um, did that answer your question? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, it's lunchtime, so we won't keep you any longer. But um, if we could all just give Stephanie another round of applause and Nicola.